Hello everyone, welcome. So today I'm going to show you how to create a repository in ABAP Git. Now, in my last video, or video before last, I can't recall, uh, I went over ABAP Git and how to install it. So this will kind of be a sequel to that initial video. So what we're going to do, remember in our last video we made transaction code Z ABAP Git. This is where ABAP Git's installed. We can do an online repository, so this is something on GitHub or another Git server that supports ABAP Git. Offline repositories where if you want to track changes using Git, you can, but you don't have to put it out on GitHub for the world to see. So it might be useful within your organization if ABAP Git is something that they want to start using. Uh, on the other hand, online repositories means we can have our code hosted on GitHub or another Git server, and we can clone that code to our SAP system and if we want to change that code, say we're the developer of that code, we can push changes out to GitHub so that other developers can clone the same code to their SAP system in its own package, and they're able to run and use our code. And that's the beauty of open source software. So let's get started. First thing we'll do, we'll open up GitHub. This is my uh, GitHub account. I'm going to click on New Repository. You should have a GitHub account, guys, uh, for many reasons, but especially if you're going to use ABAP Git, you have to, if you're going to do online repositories. I'll just say easy SAP ABAP development code. And what I'm planning, I'm going to make it a public repository. I'm going to go ahead and add a license, and the license I like to use for most of my projects is the Apache license. So read through that licensing if you're planning on using any of this code. It's a very, very permissive license. It uh, essentially just needs, if you're going to use it, my exact code or a modification of it in your project, just just link back and say, hey, I got this code from this guy. Not a, not a very restrictive license at all. You can use it commercially if you want to in your own organization. This is great because it allows people to say, okay, well, we can use this code in our business and we don't have to worry about getting sued for stealing somebody's code. So you should always provide a license for really any software you put out there on the web. So enough of that side spiel. We'll just go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new online repository with the one that I just gave. I'm going to enter my github.com slash my username slash easy SAP ABAP, which is the name of the repository that we just uh, made. Now I'm going to say, you know, clone this repository into the SAP system. And the SAP system, a repository, is essentially going to be held in a package. So I'm going to say Z easy SAP ABAP is the package that I want this to be cloned into. And I'm going to say create online repo. So now it's going to prompt me for just all the details to, you know, go ahead and make these changes. I'll say easy SAP ABAP development package. So these are the um, parameters for creating the actual package. So it's a development package. I don't have to do anything else here, I don't think. So I see it's created. So this package has a corresponding XML file under the source directory package.devc.xml. So this is the code that's going to be committed, well, the XML that's going to be committed to GitHub so that when other people pull this code down, ABAP Git knows that this is a package, ZEZSAP SAP ABAP. So I'm not going to go over the different Git operations because I'm assuming if you guys are professional software developers or you're just getting started in software development, Git is going to be something that you are going to use. Uh, in smaller organizations, you may not, but you know, for any any organization where tracking changes to code bases is going to be and in the least bit important, you're probably going to work in the context of a Git repository. So I'll just go ahead and say I'm going to stage these changes and add them to this commit. And what this means is we're going to take these you know, changes of creating this package and add it to our Git repository. I'm just going to say a comment, initial commit, my name and email address, and click commit. Now I would enter my GitHub password, but assuming that you uh, are viewing this since, yeah, last year, you are going to have a access token that you'll need to generate. I've pasted mine in here. If you want to generate an access token, you go to your GitHub, go to settings, scroll all the way down to developer settings, personal access tokens, and then you'll generate a new token. So what that token is going to be, you're going to give it a note, uh, give it an expiration period, 
you know, it's recommended to let this token expire eventually, but generally, I'd, I like to do no expiration. That's probably bad security practice, but you're going to have to give this token permission to, you know, write repos. And I think maybe user, not sure there, but if you generate a new token, you'll be given something you can copy paste, which I've pasted into this form here, username and my token, click on execute, and so we'll see commit was successful. So that's pretty cool. Let's check out our actual GitHub repo, github.com slash my username slash easy SAP ABOP. So we'll see here, initial commit, we have the .abopgit.xml. If you open this up, it's just metadata that says, hey, abopgit, this is the package. This is the details about the package when you create it, when someone clones this package. I can look at the source. There's this package, you know, easy SAP ABOP development package. That's the metadata that we entered in SAP when we created the package as prompted by abopgit. But we don't see any sort of code in this package. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go out I'm going to open up SE80. I'm going to go here and create a program. I'm going to call this program ztest underscore abopgit. Hit uh, yes to create this program. Now I'm going to say the program is test, if I can spell, program for abopgit. Executable program. Uh, I'll say test program application cross application why not just metadata now I'm going to choose the package Z easy SAP ABOP which is our package that is tracked by ABOP git I'll just create a new transport request and I'll say create report Z test easy SAP ABOP So now we're just creating a report. We're assigning it to this package that is tracked by ABOP Git. So what's going to happen? We can write our program. Let's just go ahead and come in here and say, pretty print this, right? ABOP Git is fun. That's it. We're going to go ahead and activate it. And then if we go back to our transaction Z ABOP Git, we're going to notice something pretty cool. We're going to see that this is going to be tracked by Z ABOP Git. So let's go to slash n Z ABOP Git. Now I click on my development package that we created. I can see this type PROG that indicates a program. So you'll see ABOP Git has made two entries essentially that it's going to write to our repository, which is dot prog dot abop this is going to be the actual source code in a flat file of the abop program dot prog dot xml this is going to be the metadata associated with the program so the object directory entries the user that created it time it was created original system all that stuff we can look at the diff for any changes since our last commit we see right here local added new so if i go to stage I see these two files, which indicate we've added our new program. I see the transport request associated with it. If I click on add all and commit, I'll say create z test underscore about git. I don't even know that's what I called it, but we'll go ahead and commit it. I have to enter my access token again. And now if I check GitHub on the web and refresh this repository, I see I have source folder program and our program has been committed to github so that other developers can clone this repository into their own sap systems assign it a package and get ready to use it so that being said let's do the reverse we've pushed a package to github now let's clone a package from github so i'm going to go to se80 actually i'm going to go to zabop git i'm going to go to our actual z easy sap abop I'm going to go under advanced here and click remove. So what this is going to do, if we go back into zabop git, we don't see that repository anymore. Click on repository list, there's nothing. But the original development objects are still left in the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to package z easy sap abop 
I'm going to delete this package, which is going to delete the program that we created. And what I'm going to find is that this code's gone. Well, it can't be created because it still contains objects. So let's get rid of our individual objects. Get rid of our program. Shouldn't have any sub packages. Well, I guess I do, but. shouldn't this is just a recursive weird issue here isn't it let's try and get rid of our package well let's get back out and go to SE80 again maybe it's because I have a transport request let's go to SE10 let's delete our transports and any objects associated with them so, delete this, delete the actual task underneath the transport, and delete the transport request. Now try to, I haven't done this before guys, so if this is uh, not working out, it's probably just something I'm doing. See, so it's saying the report's still assigned to it. Let's go to SE38, ztest.bop git. And of course it doesn't exist. Let's create it just to trick the system. And I'll say assign it to Z package. Don't even assign it to the Z package, assign it to. Okay, now the thing's gonna say <laughs> it's still assigned. It. Let's let's not even worry about this. Since we know full well Z test abop git doesn't exist. Let's do this. Let's go to Z abop git. I'm not gonna try and you know, trick SAP too much. We'll just have a little work around here. We'll assign it to a different package when we clone it to the system. So I'll say Z or SAP ABOP package. Now let's say Z easy SAP ABOP 2. So now if I do create online repo, I see I have my code from there. From This is from the online repository. I can select pull it'll ask me what objects I want to well this is going to be because something needs to be overwritten you normally wouldn't get this we'll assign it to this transport that we already had and now what's going to happen is this code has been imported into our SAP system so if we go to SE38 and we look at ztest.bobgit it's now in our SAP system and it was pulled from our online github repository right here so that sums up the very basics of how to use abop git to push and pull code to and from uh git servers like uh github there are some I, i'm pretty sure anyway i think i've seen this as an open source project there is a, a git server that's made specifically for use with abop git so check out some of those alternatives but uh the one i've seen you know github's been around for a while so it's it's pretty commonplace it's caught on but definitely check out your options i mean this is a uh, a really great way to uh, both share and install open source ABOP code on GitHub. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any sort of questions whatsoever, please feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, my email is usually somewhere out there. You can find it on my channel. And uh, if you have any questions, like I said, just comment, email, either one. It, either one works for me. Uh, it really helps me out if you guys leave a like to this video. And if you subscribe to this video, that is a big help. So thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.